My name is Marissa Gauri, and I'm the Deputy Environmental Manager and National Ozone Officer for Trinidad and Tobago under the Ministry of Planning and Development. Now, this project is essentially something under our portfolio under the Montreal Protocol, which is an international environmental convention that was set up to protect the ozone layer. The ozone layer is a very thin shield that surrounds the Earth, and it has a very important function in that it filters UV rays that are coming from the sun. Trinidad and Tobago would have signed on to this Montreal Protocol in the 1980s, and since then, we have been doing a lot of work to phase out substances that are damaging to the ozone layer found mainly in refrigeration and air conditioning as well as some other sectors. This particular project is focusing on moving the country towards the use of more environmentally friendly technologies and refrigerant, refrigerant that is both ozone friendly and climate friendly. We're looking to introduce the type of technology such as district cooling, use of natural refrigerants in some of our refrigeration and air conditioning systems, and really shift the market and consumer awareness towards refrigerant that will not harm us and our children in the future. This particular project, which is entitled Promoting Energy Efficiency in the Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Sector, is funded through the Global Environmental Facility, and it's implemented in partnership with the United Nations Development Program. One of the key elements of this project is that it incorporates bringing together various members of both the public and private sector, again expanding the reach of the project and allowing us to really push this new type of technology and refrigerant into the market. The approach of this project is very holistic in nature. Not only are we looking at the equipment and refrigerant, as I mentioned before, but really all various aspects that include labeling, public awareness, building of capacity in both our governmental stakeholders as well as in the private sector and really including this technology in our market. We also are leaning on expertise and other various elements from international experts so that they can really help us translate this technology into our national landscape. The objectives of this project also align very closely to the Kigali Amendment of the Montreal Protocol which was an amendment that was made to include a particular type of refrigerant called hydrofluorocarbons under the umbrella of the Montreal Protocol. This particular refrigerant is very climate damaging and therefore shifting towards natural refrigerant will help us not only achieve our objectives under the Montreal Protocol, but also under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. The Ministry of Planning and Development is very excited at the stage we have reached in the implementation of this project. We're looking forward to see where this project can take us in moving the country towards efficient cooling and changing our national landscape to use refrigerant that is both ozone and climate friendly. We're excited to work with our various stakeholders, both in the private and public sector, as well as our international partners and the DEVCO team to ensure that as a country, we achieve all of our objectives under the Montreal Protocol and the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. As a country, we are also very grateful to the funding that we have received to implement this project from the Global Environmental Facility. I will continue to work very hard to ensure we achieve all the objectives under the project. Okay, so we are day three of the mission that focuses on the possible desecrating sites in Trinidad and Tobago. We'd have spent the last two days looking at the sites based on the respondents, the expression of interest published by the project. We'd have looked at companies like TOSL, Engineering Services Limited, Qualitech, and also our own national gas company, the NGC, as possible prospects for the second pilot district cooling site under the CHEF project energy efficiency through low carbon technologies in Trinidad and Tobago. Today, we're gonna to delve into more heavier matters as we have closed door meetings with the Kuva Point Lisa stakeholders. The Kuva Point Lisa site has already been identified as pilot one and was written into the product document. The players involved currently are Eden K Properties, the owners of the business park just to the eastern side of the UTT Point Lisa's campus, the Energy Campus. Mm -hmm. 
this campus is also playing a role within the project. The actual role is currently being decided during these closed door meetings. Today we have the opportunity to present alternative plans, we have the opportunity to present the technical concepts and also the business cases to these two major stakeholders. District cooling in itself is just one component of the project. We also plan to deploy six demonstration projects that would showcase the utilization of more environmentally friendly refrigerant systems with a focus on hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbon systems have been in existence in Trinidad and Tobago for quite a while, but they have been mostly utilized in refrigeration equipment. So we're talking about the chillers, refrigerators, and freezers. We now want to transition the market towards the utilization of these more environmentally friendly refrigerants into the space cooling or the air conditioning sector, right? Where we could look at including them in homes or residents and also commercial applications. To create this market change, we hope to be able to sensitize the public so that they would request this type of technology, but also sensitize the importers so that once the demand is there, they are now able to ensure and enhance their supply chains to facilitate demand. The Project Energy Efficiency through Low Carbon Technologies allows us to look at the environmental standpoint from the stance of reduction of greenhouse gases and also the elimination or reduction of ozone depleting substances. This project allows us to marry the two. Through the implementation of the district cooling sites which look at replacement of refrigerants with more natural refrigerants in district cooling, the energy transfer um, media is usually water. On the other hand, with the demonstration sites, we'd look at more environmentally friendly refrigerants, all with the aim of reducing our carbon footprint. The project tackles the issue of our carbon footprint both directly and indirectly, in the sense that when we look at ozone depleting substances, one of the major refrigerants utilized is R22, which is currently being phased, phased out. And the replacement to this would have been HFCs, these, even though they don't affect the ozone layer as much as the predecessor, they have a high carbon footprint. So through this product, we'd be utilizing alternatives to these, which would directly reduce our carbon footprint, and indirectly through the utilization of more energy efficient technologies, we'd be able to reduce our carbon footprint as it relates to electricity production. Right. All the equipment that I just mentioned utilizes electricity and based on the burning of natural gas and other hydrocarbons to facilitate the generation of electricity in Trinidad and Tobago, um, utilizing more energy efficient technologies would reduce the demand for electricity, which indirectly reduce the amount of electricity utilized and the amount of carbon emissions required to support these types of technologies. So stay tuned as we move through day three and transition into day four.